All right, I'm excited to get started. Let's get going with creating this cool comic book cover. I'm gonna keep the reference document open because I did so much stuff. There's so many layers and little steps. I might need to refer back to it to remember everything that I did. I just kind of looked at the reference, it got creative, did a bunch of stuff, and I'm probably going to forget a few things, so I'm going to have to look back from time to time, okay? But for us to get started, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop and create a new document. So I'm going to go to my new document dialog box here. I'm going to click on art and illustration. I'm going to switch my units to inches. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different. Well, not different, but if we were truly making a traditional classic comic book cover, there's a industry standard size that they use. We are not going to follow that size. Reason being is we have a nice inkjet printer and some cool paper. And if you make some cool comic book covers, I might want to print them out. So we're going to do kind of a standard poster size that I like to use in this class, 12 by 18. And the resolution, we're gonna switch from 300 to 360. So for our inkjet printers, the native resolution from, for Epson inkjet printers is 720 pixels per inch. Half of that is 360, that gives us the printer doesn't have to do any fancy calculating. It's going to give us um, a really high quality print that matches our printer. 720 is too ridiculous. We'd have to have really, really high res photos. 360 is a good um, compromise there. And we want to pick our color profile. Make sure it's Adobe RGB 1998. Coming up to the title here, we want to always name our work. So period number. So if you're in period one, it'd be P1, for example. Underscore, last name and first initial. Underscore again, and then camel case for the project title, which is comic, capital B, book, capital C, cover. That's camel case, the um, words that come after the first one. First letter's capital, like a camel hump. And we're gonna click create gives us a nice blank white document to get started. Next up, we want to create those guidelines. All right, so we're going to go up to view and come down to new guide layout. And we want a margin of 0.25 inches all the way across. So 0.25 top left bottom and right and I'm going to click actually 0.25 too small so let me go and up that to 0.50 and click OK it's going to give us guides and a margin kind of like a title safe area we want all of our important elements inside of those blue lines. Now we also want to do some cut marks or some crop marks on the outside. So again, we're going up to view, whoops, view, new guide layout, and let's zero out all of our margins and click OK. And that gives us something that looks like this so that we can set up our cover properly. Got good margins and then some outside cut marks for if I need to print this and cut it out. Now let's get started creating the background while we're at it. We're going to get started with a new adjustment layer, gradient, a gradient adjustment layer, or a gradient fill layer. We're going to hit the down arrow here and go foreground to background and then just click over here to close that box out. Then we're going to click on the gradient itself, on the colors, to change the colors. We want to switch the, well, we can keep the black. We're going to switch the white to a very specific red, hue of 355, saturation of 100, and brightness of 90. So 355, 100, 
and then 90 and click OK. And we can click OK to exit out of our gradient editor. We want to switch our style to radial. And we want red on the inside and black on the outside. So we're going to reverse our gradient. And I want to create what's called a vignette to where it's subtle black on the outside and more of a gradation into the red. So we're going to adjust the scale of our radial gradient to about 155. 155. And you can see very subtle black and a very subtle kind of gradient into that bright red. And click OK. Next up, another new gradient fill layer. Down arrow. This one we're going to go black to white. And we are going to make it radial once again. We are not going to change the colors, but we are going to reverse it so it's black to white like that. And we're going to click OK. To this black and white gradient fill layer, we're going to add color halftones, which is a filter. Before we do that, we want to work non-destructively. So we're going to right click on that layer and convert to a smart object. And you'll notice that we have our picture of our gradient fill. If I double click on the thumbnail, I can then come in and adjust it if I needed to. I'm going to close out of that just to show that as a smart object, if you double click on the thumbnail, you can go in and edit. To the smart object, this gradient fill, we're going to add filter, pixelate, and color halftone. For the values, we want a max radius of 30 pixels and then all of our channels to be zeroed out. And I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that we added these cool color halftones. I want to blend this layer, the black and white with the halftones, into our red and black fill layer. So I'm going to change my blending mode from normal to multiply. It's a little darker than I want here. So if I'm looking over at my reference, it's a little lighter. So I think I'm going to come up to the opacity and bring that down to 50%, 50% opacity. Next, we need to bring in our hero, our black knight that we did in the previous tutorial, the um, girl we cut out, I think in that tutorial we called her Black Widow, but anyhow, we're going to bring her in, all right, name of the comic book, Black Knight, so I changed up the character name, we're going to go up to File, and then we have two options here, Place Embedded or Place Linked. The difference is, if you choose Place Linked, the pro of that is it links to the file. It doesn't actually bring it into the document permanently. It links to it, thus making the file size a little bit smaller. However, there's a very big major con to that. And that is if you ever delete that image that you're placing in here or rename it or move it, it won't be in your project anymore. All right? So most of the time I do place embedded. Just easier and I'm not worrying about the file size. I'm going to click on that TIFF that we made. I believe yours was called Black Widow. I went ahead and renamed mine to Black Knight. It doesn't matter. You just want to have that image. It doesn't really matter what it's called for now. And we want to place it. Then her legs are cut off at the bottom, so we don't want her free floating down there. I'm going to move her down slightly to the right all the way to the bottom so it doesn't look like her legs are cut off. And then I'm going to hold Shift and make her a little bit bigger. Don't have to be exact like me, just make her a little bit bigger and then hit return to place the image like that. Next, let's, um, well, we'll do it in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, what we're gonna do is create a new person with the comic book effect and bring her in okay so that's what we're going to do next right now we got a pretty good background going see you at the next tutorial